So this is entry 11, dated uh, Monday, March 9th, Tuesday, March 10th, 1964. This is a five-page uh, entry, a rather long one. So what, are, what do you want to tell me about this? Well, I, I think on, on page one, it reflects uh, the fact that I uh, had a uh, fairly long interview uh, with Mr. Thomas Buchanan, who was an American correspondent for one of the Paris newspapers. And Buchanan had received uh, a lot of publicity for writing articles in, in the French press, and, and which were, I think, probably republished or quoted in the American uh, press, uh, raising a series of questions about the legitimacy of the uh, Warren Commission and the fact that it was ignoring a, a wide range of facts that uh, tended to uh, 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 undercut their conclusion with respect to uh, their tentative conclusion with respect to Lee Harvey uh, Oswald. And I undertook this interview because Buchanan had approached the Deputy Attorney General and uh, and Nick Katzenbach found it useful for me to be available to interview these people so that he did not have to spend the time doing so. And so I was acting uh, as a matter of courtesy on behalf of the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General, and the Commission to hear Mr. Buchanan out. So uh, he had an interesting background. He did leave his American post because of uh, uh, his membership or reported membership in the Communist Party. Uh, and so he, he, he certainly, uh, uh, you know, was not, uh, you, you know, uh, accepting of that, that uh, uh, departure from the United States in, a, in an amicable way. So he had some antipathy toward the institutions in the United States and a feeling of a sense of injustice at being, uh, uh, having his career uh, as adversely affected by those a allegations. Uh, he did not provide any information of specific and new value. He raised some old uh, issues, uh, uh, such as judgments from the uh, Parkland uh, authorities and, and other questions regarding Oswald's capacity as a rifleman and so forth, all of which were well known to the commission and the staff and were the subject of independent investigation and were in the process of being addressed in detail in, in the course of the memoranda and draft sections of the report that ultimately would be repaired. So I really did not feel I had any special obligations to probe further or ask for documentation. And I thanked him for uh, coming over and uh, letting uh, uh, me listen to what he had to say. And that was the end of it. Was that a, a useful kind of exercise to talk to a critic like that and sort of see what was on people's minds? I, I think in that respect it was. I mean, it, it was. I, I did itemize in, in this journal entry uh, several of the uh, issues that he raised. And you know, obviously, if someone came in with something new, oh, it would be very important. Mm -hmm. So there was some utility to reading what was in the press. Uh, reading the criticism in particular in the press and listening to people who were uh, beginning to make a career in uh, writing about the inadequacies of, of the Warren Commission. Buchanan uh, today is largely remembered as the, the person, I think, who published the very first book-length uh, uh, assassination title, the first of many, many thousands, but I think he, uh, he holds that title as being the first one. The, the memo goes on and talks about a number of other um, uh, subjects. Uh, do you want to... Um uh, touch on any of these others. Paragraph six uh, refers to uh, uh, Nosenko and uh, his interrogation by the uh, CIA. Yes, no, that very, very important. Uh, our first information, and it turned out to be the only information we obtained about Mr. Nosenko, came from an FBI interview of, of Mr. Nosenko, who was in CIA custody. Nosenko was a defector from the Soviet Union. He claimed to have been uh, active in the intelligence operations and to be able to state uh, with conviction uh, that Oswald was not an agent of the Soviet Union when he returned to the United States. The uh, uh, five-page memo from the uh, uh, FBI uh, uh, set this forward uh, and, and, and then did, did report that there was some uncertainty within the FBI as to uh, the bona fides of uh, Nosenko. Within the CIA, there was a very strong contingent, uh, uh, supported in large part by Mr. Angleton, that claimed that uh, Nosenko was, was a double agent. He was not a defector. 
And to that extent, they uh, relied on the subsequent a testimony of a subsequent defector who showed up and, and challenged Nosenko's legitimacy as a defector. So the CIA seemed uh, surprised that the FBI had interviewed him and then reported brief, in some reform, but very useful form, to the commission about it. There might have been some l lack of agreement with respect to the uh, FBI's access to uh, Nosenko because I think the FBI was denied access uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, might be mistaken on that, but my impression is that there was such an intense debate within the CIA uh, about uh, Nosenko uh, that they really didn't want to have any uh, input from uh, from any other investigative agencies. They had enough trouble handling their own internal uh, differences, which went on for several years, and when ultimately disclosed uh, in, uh, before the Congress, uh, demonstrated that the CIA had acted in a a, a very intimidating, illegal way in dealing with uh, uh, Mr. Nosenko, who ultimately was found to be a legitimate, a legitimate uh, defector, and was uh, uh, provided with financial support uh, uh, for the remainder of his life. Mm -hmm. With the ongoing dispute at the CIA, the commission uh, uh, had to uh, handle any information about Nosenko with care. At subsequent meetings, the commission debated uh, uh, the information because it was so obviously of importance, if true. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, uh, Deputy Director Helms made it very clear to the commission that, they, that the CIA would not endorse information provided by Mr. Nosenko, and therefore the commission should not rely upon it. The commission was prepared to accept that conclusion, of course, although uh, Mr. Rankin and others really wanted some public record that it had been made available but could not be used. And it, I don't think there was ever any such documentation from the CIA, but I'm not sure of that. Uh, in, in any event, this was the first time it sort of uh, brought, was brought to my attention, and, uh, and it was of, of great significance to our assessment of Oswald's history and his, his relationship with uh, uh, the, uh, the, the agencies. And, in Russia. As I mentioned in later years, Nosenko was uh, validated by the documents that were subsequently obtained and the testimony of, of uh, other KGB agents. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the memo then shifts gears to uh, quite a unique conversation that you were um, privy to, I suppose, between the Chief Justice and Mr. McCloy. Uh, do, can, you, can you set the scene and tell us a little bit about that? It's actually very well written, um, point number seven here. I don't know if you want to read some of that to us, but... Uh, well, it, 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 this was a case where I, I came, came back from a meeting and was told uh, uh, immediately that there was something going on that I ought to, uh, uh, ought to hear. Uh, it involved a couple of very important issues. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the, the first thing, that it re the meeting reflects the fact that the, the Chief Justice was very anxious to have the order of witnesses changed so that those that he thought were most important were, were presented uh, uh, sooner r rather than later. He was particularly focused uh, on, on the, uh, the, the, the medical uh, uh, witnesses and, uh, uh, and, and, and including those from Parkland, but also the autopsy doctors in particular. And, and at, at page... Uh, three of the memo, uh, I indicated that we would try to have the doctors appear before the commission really the, the, almost the very next week, the, the week of March uh, 16. And, and Norman and I at that point tried to uh, uh, terminate the meeting because we had uh, uh, responded favorably to the, uh, the chief's desires and uh, everyone in our view should get back to work. Uh, but about at that time, Mr. McCloy entered the commission room and began to ask questions about particular aspects of the, of, of the investigation, but soon turned to the issue of security precisions. And I think uh, within a, a few minutes, the uh, Chief Justice and, and, and Commissioner McCloy stated their, their very different positions on this very important uh, issues. Uh, 
uh, McCloy, for one, wanted access uh, to all the significant information held by the Department of the Treasury that related uh, to the agency's performance and recommendations for future changes in policies or practices. In short, he wanted access to the Rowley Report. And it was at this meeting that the Chief Justice heard for the first time about the Rowley Report and basically said he didn't want any part of it because he feared it would be intruding uh, into uh, the department's uh, secrets and, and might be leaked to the public, which would injure the operations of, of that uh, agency. So uh, on, on page four, I had th this summary uh, following the Chief Justice absence from the room while he took a telephone call during which McCloy uh, specifically and bluntly outlined his position to those of us in the room. And there were many of the staff people listening with great interest as they watched these two titans uh, combat e each other uh, on the commission supremacists. So when the Chief Justice uh, returned to the room, uh, I, I report that uh, he and M Mr. McCloy engaged in a heated discussion of the report and all the rest of us sat quietly. The two men disagreed rather sharply. Mr. McCloy expressed his view that the commission should get access to all the relevant materials from Secret Service and then agree to consult with them regarding publishing of these prior to the final report. According to Mr. McCloy, any debate on this matter could be resolved by the president at the appropriate time. The chief justice responded that this would put the president on the spot and that if he decided not to release any of this material, he would be accused of covering up the investigation of the assassination. The other major concern of the Chief Justice was the fear that if detailed information was made known to the members of the commission and staff, they would be primary suspects in the event of any leak which resulted in another assassination uh, uh, attempt. Period, end quote. Now, I think you have to admit the Chief Justice made two important points about the president and about the risk of leak. In fact, there had already been several significant leaks uh, from the commission, and I happen to think they were more from the commission members than the staff, but uh, I can't be sure of, of how many leaks there came from the staff. Uh, so uh, McCloy's position was quite clear. It was a position I tended to uh, agree with, but yet uh, the, the Chief Justice was correct that any involvement of the president in this would not be appropriate that no matter what the president did, he would be faulted and the commission uh, 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 and its conclusions might be tainted uh, by what had been done on, on this particular uh, 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 subject. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you for a moment about the Chief Justice role and commitment to the investigation. I think this is a very good time to kind of talk about that because this is a man who didn't ask for this responsibility yet clearly took it very seriously. Give me, give me your assessment of, uh, of his commitment yeah. to this investigation. I, I think that's a very important point and, and, and uh, often lost in discussion uh, because the critics, uh, of course, uh, uh, look at the absences of the other members of, of the commission as a measure of their commitment to the work. And, and, and I don't think that's entirely fair, but I think uh, it's important that the uh, Chief Justice's commitment to the project uh, was quite extraordinary. Now, at, at, throughout this com commission, which began in December and we're now in, 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 in March, he's, he's also uh, maintaining full control over the docket at the Supreme Court, partici participating fully in, in oral, appearances, uh, oral appearances. Uh, before the court and the subsequent conferences among the justices in making their determination as to the outcome of the cases before them. So uh, he, notwithstanding those duties at the court, he came over to the uh, commission very frequently. Uh, I personally uh, cannot say from personal knowledge that he showed up every day, but I think he did appear to consult with Rankin uh, uh, on most of the days of the week, uh, and uh, uh, and it, it was for, and the nature of his appearances are reflected here. He cared about the efficiency of our operation. He wanted to prioritize in terms of witnesses in a way in which the staff found it easy to agree with, um, and he had uh, strong feelings on some substantive I issues. And, and this was one issue on which he. Uh, uh, felt strongly, and, and actually the, the outcome 
conform to his view rather than to McCloy. Mm -hmm. So McCloy had strong views on this issue, but McCloy somehow was unable to pursue his his uh, convictions effectively because he didn't attend the meetings at which the subject was addressed and resolved. Yeah. So m m without attending all the meetings, which the Chief Justice did, <laughs> uh, it was hard to ensure that your views as a commissioner would always be heard and evaluated. Mm -hmm. So there were penalties to non-appearance, to say the least. I want to go back to just a moment before McCloy entered the room when uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's understandable, of course, why the Chief Justice wanted to hurry these witnesses along uh, to accommodate the, the schedule with the Supreme Court. But do you have any idea why he seemed so eager to have the autopsy doctors come in to testify? Because this kind of put the staff at a disadvantage because you were still in the process of preparing. Well, we, it, people were preparing, and they were on the list. Uh, uh, he was probably trying to advance it by a week or two. Um, and uh, we, when we put together the, least, uh, the, the list for the commission to consider, uh, Rankin, uh, consulting with the responsible attorneys, would you know, put down the list in which the, the uh, lawyers uh, thought they could best develop the facts. Uh, but uh, in cases like this, the autopsy materials were sort of you know, unique, a package of materials, and the doctors uh, were familiar and available. It was a question of fixing their schedules and, and, and honoring their other commitments. So when the Chief Justice expresses a preference like this, it requires not only that the lawyers, you know, sort of re review and revisit what they've done to prepare for those witnesses, but they have to ensure that the witnesses are available and that there will be time to interview the witnesses uh, before they come before the commission. Mm -hmm. So it complicated the work of the staff, but that's always the case in law firms or other major institutions in which uh, people have certain you know, directives that have to be implemented. I think he may have been influenced uh, uh, by increasing evidence uh, or, or, or questions being raised in the newspapers about the pace of the investigation uh, people looking for a final point so early, uh, in my view, so early uh, at this point in, 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 in March. Um, and to some extent, of course, the, uh, the chief was, was looking to the fact that, uh, you know, he would be relieved of his Supreme Court responsibilities in the most part by, say, mid-June or whenever the appropriate usual date would be in, in June. Um, and he wanted to be looking toward a summer in which this project could be finished. So th those are the kinds of, uh, you know, sentiments I think uh, resulted in his, you know, engaging in this kind of, kind of uh, discussion about dates and prioritizing of witnesses. We, we raised this point before, but it's, it's worth mentioning once again, there is so much criticism about the, the commission being pressured and pushed by the president or by uh, Congress or other, uh, other officials, but really, the pressure and the pushing came from the news media and the public. There, there were no pressures, as I understand it, from inside the government. Is that correct? That's correct. In fact, you know, the White House uh, 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 very carefully uh, maintained uh, to have no contact whatsoever with, with, with the commission, and that remained true until the scheduling of the final report emerged uh, in, in, in August. Uh, um, and the pressures, from, uh, the pressures were internal, uh, and certainly the, the press was always demanding uh, uh, a public uh, display of what the commission was doing. Uh, and, but the members of the commission were, were, they were sensitive to leaks in the paper about what they were doing. Um, but they did not really change their schedule uh, in, in response to the, the urging of, of, of the press. Yeah. That's a minor point, but it's good to, good to clarify that. 